This video is going to be a film study look at how Brian Branch really took over during the Lions' 47-9 win over the Cowboys in Week 6 down in Dallas. Specifically, once Aiden Hutchinson went out, went out of the game, Brian Branch seemed to almost turn it up a notch, but he played incredible throughout. Two interceptions, one forced fumble, big hit on Dak Prescott on a safety blitz. Those are impact plays, and they show up in the stat sheet. I actually am almost more impressed by a play he made in coverage where he's not targeted and he's not going to get any statistical designation. Overall, Detroit's defense was flying around the field. The film came out really early, and I was able to take a look at it uh, this morning. Branch played at about the highest level I think you can play at for a safety. Two interceptions, a forced fumble on the sideline. His timing on those punches is perfect. His accuracy as well when the, the ball carrier is moving. Terrion Arnold had just actually tried to get a strip as well, and then he ends up recovering the ball. It was almost scary to watch how Detroit was flying around the field. There was even a moment in the third and fourth quarter where after Hutchinson goes out, they're still getting pressure on Dak Prescott consistently. Uh, that defense showed up. Aaron, Aaron Glenn deserves considerable credit, if you ask me, even though the Cowboys obviously are a one-dimensional offense. So we're going to take a look at the first interception. I think this is second possession for Dallas. Branch is down here, bottom side of our screen. We're going to bring a nickel blitz with Amik Robertson. I think at some point, if Branch keeps making plays like this, and yes, this ball is, is somewhat over, underthrown. I think at some point, if you keep making plays like this, as a safety, that you're going to be avoided. So to a certain extent, Aaron Glenn will be able to put him locations such that quarterbacks say, I'm not going to throw this particular route in that area because that's where he's going to show up. It's a leaping interception uh, that, on a ball that's intended for C.D. Lamb, essentially a snag smash concept. Lamb is hesitated just a little bit here by the blitz because Robertson's crossing his face and he's going here. Branch is stepping up, so uh, Dak Prescott's reading that as perhaps he's going to be a flat defender. He kind of sits here and then fades back. He can almost play two routes in this tight of space down in the red zone. If this were not you know, inside the 20, then perhaps he's not able to cover two routes or cover this much ground. I think that additional to that, what's happening is you got the tight end, the running back on the backside because Aiden Hutchinson is obviously still in the game. It's first quarter. So they, the Cowboys, are planning for that. And Aaron Glenn is trying to counter it by dropping Hutchinson in coverage, bringing Jalen Reeves Mabin, bringing Amik Robertson through the B-gap. And I will give you um, the end zone angle so you can see it yourself. Very similar to a blitz they used with Malafonwu two or three times last season, late in the year, and, in, and Branch as well. Sick ball skills, obviously, it's going to get most of the uh, attention, and I understand that. But Branch, the awareness and the, the ability to understand and see the routes in front of him I think is is just as remarkable. You're talking about a guy who in this particular play is essentially taking away two routes from Dak Prescott at the same time. Prescott, yes, he'd like to have that throw back, I think, and, and put that thing out there a little bit further toward, back towards the back corner. But I also believe that Pres Prescott thought there would be more space there. He didn't think that Branch could cover that much ground, and that's a part of this. I think it's a little short-sighted to just say, oh, it's underthrown. Branch covers more ground with his burst and his awareness at the same time, and then has the ball skills to finish it off. A ridiculous game uh, by him. I don't see any way that he's not Defensive Player of the Week at this point. I really love this play. This is third possession for the Cowboys. We're now into the moment where Detroit is just dominating. He's going to fill B-gap, so he's going to fill inside of this edge defender. I think that's Ukwu, but I could be wrong. 13 personnel group by the Cowboys, and I also want to call attention to something that DJ Reader does here. Right in the middle as a nose tackle, I mean, watch him just stonewall this downhill concept. It's duo, fine. There is no, I mean, Aline McNeil too. Aline McNeil's getting moved a little bit. He actually peels off and helps get involved in a tackle. It is a five-yard gain, but this is an example, if you ask me, of how much ground Branch can cover. He's a third-level defender here. Here's your second-level defenders. Uh, Kirby Joseph's kind of walked up into the box a little bit. And on this base block by the tight end, Ferguson, on the edge defender, Branch is able to get a clear read window into that space. You see a window open. It's a run concept. Go through it. Absolutely playing at an incredibly high level, in my opinion. To have him back in this defense is levels them up. 
immediately. Of course, the loss of Aiden Hutchinson long-term and short-term is going to impact the Lions' defense. But back to Reader for a moment. We'll pause it this time so you can see how he gets his cleats and his toes in the ground and just basically hard joints this underneath. So he's created hard joints with his legs, and he's got the base and the hips to hold that spot, make the running back veer back. There's nowhere for him to go front side because Carlton Davis the third was there. I think it's a brilliant play by Reader. I'll have a video out about on him, on him uh, later on on Tuesday, later on this week, probably Tuesday morning. So an attempted screen up to the top side by Dak Prescott, where it, it's covered well. First of all, by the Lions. Second of all, Branch is a half field defender down here to the bottom side, so he's a safety. And while Anzalone is playing man to the boundary on the tight end, and everybody else is locked up in man, you got to have your safety sometimes. They'll clean up things because you're using your your inside linebacker, one of them, in man. So when the quarterback breaks contain, there is no secondary contain from a linebacker level because both guys are occupied, meaning Jack Campbell and Anzalone. Here's Anzalone on the tight end, Jack Campbell up on the running back, taking away the screen. Branch going to come downhill, hold Dak Prescott to a one-yard gain. There's not a huge hit there, Prescott doesn't slide the way that quarterbacks are afforded the opportunity to do so now. So uh, hence, the I, I suspect that's the reason why there's, there's no call here. Nor do I think there should be. Branch has got superb approach on this. His angle, his leverage side. Now, there's, no, there's really no help to be expected to his inside because it's man, but you do have defensive linemen running inside out to potentially help. So if Branch is going to miss this tackle, He's going to miss it to the inside. He's going to force Prescott to go to the inside. Just everything he does is spectacular. Very well trained. A very intelligent player. Third quarter here. I believe that this is to the point where Hutchinson is now off the field. Branch going to blitz off the edge. And you get this like string or rope effect between him and Carlton Davis the third. It is a, a zone response by Carlton Davis the third. He's pushing the receiver or releasing the receiver to the inside. I think this is the one where, where Davis... It's like a cleat on the head or something like that. But fake run concept to the top side with the fullback in motion. Branch, not worried about that at all. He's going for quarterback. I love him as a blitzer, which is crazy because he's really good against the run. He's spectacular in pass coverage. He's also great with his ball skills. Shocking when he, I don't know about you, it was shocking for me when he dropped that interception against Matt Stafford and the Rams in week one. Forgive me if the video kind of skipped there a little bit, had some difficulty with my streaming computer. So Branch is really good at this. He's, they used this in his rookie year last season. Off the edge, he's got an explosive closing speed, just like he does when the ball's in the air, just like he does in coverage. He covers ground faster than I think people expect him to, and Dak Prescott's got to get this ball off really quick. It's a second and nine, third quarter. So he forces Prescott to get it off quick. The tight end is actually releasing into the flats, theoretically should be open. Nope. Carlton Davis the third is there to finish him off. Spectacular example, if you ask me, of team defense, number one. Number two, faking the blitz with Campbell and Anzalone up the middle. Those guys respond to the running back. Huge momentum swing on plays like this. It doesn't happen necessarily on this play. But when your corner's playing cover two over here, basically sitting in the in the flats. On stuff like this, you see, I see multiple pick sixes or big hits like this one. Great timing by Carlton Davis III. Unfortunately, suffered a, an injury there. I, I think he's okay. I don't. I don't pretend to know all of the um, updates on him because I think we were all focused on Aiden Hutchinson after the game. All right, now we're going to get Branch's probably most impressive play, if you ask me. Again, I had a little trouble with my streaming computer, so sorry if you lost the video for a second. This is a third and 12, and he's locked up against CeeDee Lamb. And so the reason why I like this play so much is that there was examples yesterday in yesterday's game of the Lions recognizing that they have a singular talent there in Dallas. Not that the other receivers aren't any good. They are and they've made plays this year. Tolbert had the game-winning touchdown catch against the Steelers on the road, but they recognized the moment at times. So credit Aaron Glenn for that. In this situation, third and 12, they've just gone ahead and put their superstar safety on CeeDee Lamb, 
and he plays excellent coverage on him. Now it's also possible that you know he's got help on a particular side, so so Branch is able to be heavy on Lamb. But I don't see where the safety is gonna gonna jump this underneath cut by Lamb. It looks like he's holding the middle of the field to me. So really, this just looks like man to me. There's times where the Lions and, and multiple NFL teams kind of help out on an inside release. Basically, the first guy, the first in cut, the safety's going to take. So you as a DB, slot corner especially, know what you've got in terms of where your help is, where your leverage is. Generally looking at man here, if you ask me. And Dak Prescott got pressure in his face again. Third and 12, doesn't want to get the ball to Ferguson, perhaps because he thinks the DB Vildor is going to close down on him. I think it's, I don't want maybe not his most impressive play on the day because he got two picks and one forced fumble, but to me, it's the one that's almost most notable. We're going to go ahead and put Branch, who has great ball skills, great tackler, incredible awareness and ability to read the play and react. And now we're going to ask him to cover one of the best receivers in the league. Of course, Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb seem to be having issues at times in 2024. Nonetheless, I think it is a very impressive play for Brian Branch to turn in. Terrion Arnold actually tries to punch this ball out on the completion to, a, I think it's Flournoy. And then Branch comes in and actually does it for him. Sick play. Turnover-worthy plays are always going to change the tone and tenor of the game. Brian Branch seems to do that way more often than other people. Uh, I use it When he's used as a blitzer, when he's used in coverage, when he's just around the football. To my point or, that I said earlier on, on the first interception, on the second possession, I think that if Brian Branch keeps playing like this, you're looking at a situation where quarterbacks avoid him altogether and teams try to get their best players away from him. I don't know if we're there yet, but I'm just, just based on the game yesterday. If he, continue, if he th- throws up another game like this one, next week against Minnesota. That's the type of reaction that I would have as an offensive play caller, trying to basically get away from a guy who's just destructive at all three levels of the defense. Whenever the football's around him, whenever your best player's around him, whenever your quarterback's around him, you just want to stay away from him. Finally, his second interception, basically sitting in the middle of the field here. It kind of reminds me of the dropped interception against the Rams a little bit, such that the, the ball is just really up for grabs. I think we are 13 minutes left in the third quarter. I might be wrong here. Perhaps the I've got the quarter wrong. Maybe it's fourth quarter. But either way, Dallas was going for it on fourth down in their own end at home early, with a lot of game left. Let's do it that way. If it is fourth quarter, 13 minutes left, something like that, you're going for it. Like That's how dominant Detroit's defense was. Brian Branch was really at the forefront of all of it. Another situation where they're playing man, and this goes to my point with the previous play. Now Branch is the free safety. This is CeeDee Lamb. So they've got Robertson, who I thought played very well, and Kirby Joseph essentially bracketing, doubling CeeDee Lamb, taking him away as an option. Dak Prescott goes the correct place with the ball. Ball's a little bit overthrown, but there's pressure in his face. Aleem McNeil was amazing yesterday. He is a force. I also like the, the restraint he shows. Basically, he just fronts up Dak Prescott here, and he isn't trying to get a big hit or do anything that uh, would draw a penalty. So in terms of saying, yeah, well, Dak Prescott's got to hit this throw here, there is immediate pressure on him by Aleem McNeil. And so Prescott sliding to his left. The ball was you know, obviously quite high in terms of an accuracy or location standpoint. So Branch gets an easy one here, kind of makes up for or tries to make up for the drop against the Rams, unfortunately unable to take it to the house. The end zone angle is really cool of this one because you see him kind of slalom running through Dallas's offense, through his off, through their offensive line. In fact, I think you get a, a little bit of a better idea of the pressure that's on Prescott as well from this perspective. The end zone angle, I think, is always helpful. Yes, the throw's high, and so Prescott will be downgraded for that by different rating services, but the pressure that the Lions put on, how often they were in his face, how often the – The DBs were making routes difficult for these guys. I don't know of a better defensive performance. I'm sure there have been in in the last year, year plus, or year and a half plus. How they finished the win streak. I guess maybe Jacksonville, 2022. The Jets on the road. The win in New York late in 2022. The Brock Wright game, the game-winning touchdown on the fourth down play action pass. Last year, I'm sure there was ones that I'm unable to recall right now. This was ridiculous physicality by the Lions defense. 
which is what made the Aiden Hutchinson injury obviously so difficult to stomach because you 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 were not allowed to enjoy now. You were not given the time to enjoy what was really, I think, a seminal moment. If the Lions defense can play, not like this, but if they can play close to this level and the offense is as efficient as they were yesterday against the Cowboys, the sky's the limit. I'm looking forward to the matchup, obviously, against the Vikings. Everyone's going to talk about Minnesota. I think they just went across the the ocean and won a football game against the Jets as well. And their defense is playing spectacular. Yes, they're getting a lot done. I think the Lions are up to the task, and I'll go ahead and say it now. I think the Lions are going to go in there and get a win. But I understand that there's a long way between he, right now and the, the point in time when they kick it off next week in that matchup. I'm looking forward to it. I think Brian Branch is a guy that Aaron Glenn and the defensive staff can move around against the Vikings, against any team. And basically, he almost has a an effect that like superstar players have on Madden and college football, where things happen and you go, if you're playing the game, you say, that wouldn't occur in real life. That's not realistic. He wouldn't make a one-hand interception. He wouldn't be able to tackle my quarterback like that and strip the ball. He wouldn't be able to swim or rip past a starting left tackle and still get to my quarterback. It's Brian Branch. Yes, he can. And at this point in time, he's playing at an all-pro level, particularly in, in the Cowboys game. When he's – the game when he was out, I think you could – it was palpable. You could see that there was a space. There was, an, there was a, a level of force that was not brought to that game from the safety position. Not that Kirby Joseph isn't playing well. He's got four interceptions. Amik Robertson, I did a film study video on him about a week ago, and I think he's great in coverage so far this year. Has there been times when he's been beat? Yes, but from a nickel or slot corner standpoint, Amik Robertson's playing at a really high level. Brian Branch is doing pretty much everything and anything that the Lions coaching staff ask him to do on a play-by-play basis, and that changes from snap to snap. It's ridiculous, and the only other guy in the NFL, and I've said this before, that I can compare it to from a ceiling standpoint, meaning the depth and width of how he can impact the game from the safety position is Kyle Hamilton. You guys let me know what you think of the plays that I picked to show Brian Branch's impact, how well he played in Detroit's utterly dominant 47 win over the Cowboys in Dallas. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study video, please consider grabbing a link to it, sharing it out on social media so other Lions fans can enjoy it as well.